everyone. Welcome to the world of Lord Russell, the podcast where we talk to Lord Russell about his autobiography, My Way. He talks about different episodes. My name is Venetia Peach, and I run and own the marketing and communications agency, Peach Revolution. Lord Russell, hello and welcome. Hello, Venetia. Hello, the audience. Uh, good to be back again for another and thrilling show. So uh, this sounds exciting. Africa, Kenya, the Maasai people. Amazing. Yes. So today we're going to talk about Lord Russell's encounter with the Maasai people in Nairobi, in Maasai Mara. And uh, it, it's a wonderful adventure, actually. It's uh, out of this world, what happened, how we encountered different animals as well. So he's going to talk about all of that captured in his book, as I said, My Way, the autobiography. But for our listeners today, he's just going to narrate everything, get you in the mood for that, that episode, so that you want to read more about it in the book. So Lord Russell, Absolutely. I wanted to know, so how come, you know, you ended up there in the Maasai Mara with Maasai people, Maasai guides? How did it all happen? Well, do you know what? It's an interesting story because I can remember as a child, actually, um, my one of my favourite programmes on TV was a programme called Daktari, which I do understand was actually based in, in Kenya. It may not have been, but I believed it was uh, Africa. And I was mesmerised by Daktari. And they had this, uh, <laughs> this short-sighted lion called Clarence, which was wonderful, and a naughty cheetah as well. So um, uh, chimpanzee, I think it's called cheetah, actually. And so that was fantastic. I always thought that at that stage I must visit Africa. So, of course, in uh, 2018, that reality came. And um, I booked my flights for December to have Christmas, New Year out in Kenya, and um, off I went, off to Nairobi. Fantastic. Okay. So the f- brilliant flight out to Nairobi. And when I got to Nairobi, I'd booked into a wonderful place. It was called the, Maf- what is called the Mafuega Club, mm-hmm. an interesting club in the heart of Nairobi. Uh, in fact, when you're at the Mafuega Club, you think you're in the heart of the Maasai Mara, but you're not. You're in the middle of Nairobi itself. It's quite incredible. Okay. Right. And um, one of the things about the Mafuega Club, of course, is it's quite famous. Films have been made there. And one of the most famous films is Out of Africa, um, a film that starred Robert Redford, Meryl Streep, amongst others. And it was made at the Mafuega Club. It's quite an interesting, uh, very popular and and well-renowned film. And, of course, when I got to the Mafuega Club, they uh, said, well, we've got a lovely room for you, Lord Russell. So... um, They duly took me up the stairs of the Mafuega Club, and I thought, I remember these staircases from the film out of Africa. Mm -hmm. Looking at the pictures, thinking, well, they're different pictures now, well, they would be. And, of course, they took me to this room, and it was the room, actually, that was um, featured in Out of Africa as as the film. And I do remember... I mean, I remember the film, watching the film, amazing film. Yes, brilliant film. And I can remember Meryl Streep sitting on the bed, and I think Robert Redford walked into the room, and this was the exact same room. Now I was I was given for free nights. Wow. <laughs> So <laughs> I thought this is incredible. Um, something to start my um, my adventure in Africa off with a with a shining light. So it was stunning, really. Um, so three nights, um, three days, and so on at the Mafuega Club was quite interesting. And whilst I was there, of course, I found out that Maf- the Mafuega Club itself actually has a reciprocal um, relationship with the Norwich Club here in Norfolk. So I thought, wow, maybe I'll join the Norwich Club and get uh, reciprocal rates when I go back to to Africa again. But uh, haven't done that yet. But yeah, it was fantastic. And of course, from uh, the Mafuega Club, um, it was a wonderful trip down to to the Maasai, Maasai Mara. Mm-hmm. Um, so a Bangladeshi Airways trip, down we went. It was fantastic. It's only about a 14, 16-seater aircraft, but, you know, wonderful. Got to uh, got to the Maasai Mara. And of course, um, a Jeep trip to, to Cotter's um, Open Safari Park, which is an incredible safari park yes. in the Maasai Mara. Really mm-hmm. is quite incredible. But the thing you have to remember is that um, when you're out in, in the Maasai Mara, uh, this was an open, open park, so animals can come in as they wish. So there is a bit of element of danger to it. But of course, you're three and a half thousand feet above sea level, so not an awful lot of oxygen. So walking around, you, know, you have to take deep breaths every now and again. It's quite, quite an unusual thing, but um, a wonderful park nonetheless. So, um, and that was really the centre of everything for me there. And I got to know quite a few of the Maasai uh, people that were working there and some of the warriors that were there as well understanding their culture a bit more and of course um 
uh, interested in the way they dressed as well. So uh, very colourful people, tall people, um, quite beautiful people in many ways. And my God, can they jump? Their famous uh, Maasai jumps are just incredible, yes. Venetia. They really are. And if you try to emulate it, you, you seriously cannot. It, it, they, they jump as high as you can imagine. Really very expert at jumping. So they wore certain special robes, didn't they? They do. Very colourful robes. Uh, lots of uh, yellow, red, uh, greens, uh, oranges. And uh, that's their robes. It's beautiful, absolutely stunning robes. And of course, you know, when they're out in the bush, when they're out in the, the Maasai, they do tend to wear what they, I call bling, which is these, these overalls, uh, which have spinning discs. Um, mm -hmm. So they, as they spin... Is that they to reflect, reflect the, the light? Yeah, it, refre it reflects the sunlight. And um, I think probably one of the reasons why the animals keep at bay. <laughs> and they yeah. see these guys walking around with these quite wonderful, colourful uh, outfits on and these spinning discs and they're reflecting the light and then keep away. Maybe it just frightens them off. But the Maasai did tell me that they have an, uh, an affinity with the wildlife in their mind, whereas the wildlife know they're a higher order and uh, then the Maasai and the Maasai know that the animals are a lower order, but respect um, in, in all cases. So um, I'm not saying they don't get attacked. They probably do, but very rare, really, to be honest. But fantastic. Yeah. Would you like to talk about the Maasai baboons as well? Because oh, yes. a lot of them. Oh, my word. I mean, the, the, the cottage itself is, is, is like a, a tent. You stay in a tent. It's glamping um, in, the middle of, uh, in the middle of the Maasai Mara. And of course, you've got all the wildlife around you. In my particular uh, glamping tent, if I want to call it, call it that, uh, very special place. You know, they love it inside. We're surrounded by baboons. You know, I come out in the morning and they'd be there. Um, large yeah. baboons, you know, always with their red bums on display. Yeah, exactly. I mean, were they quite mischievous or? Yeah, very mischievous. I mean, they um, they knew I was a, a male, so they, they kept at bay, but they watched me. They don't tend to attack males, apparently. But if there was a female on her own, um, they'd be very mischievous. They'd probably go into the tents, uh, pinch all the, the, the uh, makeup and things yeah. and and whatever, uh, they, can be very, <laughs> they can be very <laughs> mischievous. And of course, they've got these huge, great teeth. So you think to yourself, hold on a minute. <laughs> I'm oh not going to get into God, an yeah. argument with you guys because yeah. you know, you'll seriously get nipped a bit yeah. badly. So well, there's lots of them. I mean, it wasn't just one or two. I'm talking about a whole troop of these, yeah. these baboons surrounding me in the mornings and in the evenings. Fascinating. So that was <laughs> that was an eye opener, to say the least. And probably a prelude to uh, my actual safari, which I, I took I went on um, shortly afterwards, after arriving, which yeah. was incredible. And did you celebrate your birthday as well? I did, yeah, because I was there uh, over December. My birthday's in December. Um, so a wonderful celebration. Uh, my traditional drink of champagne was, was served, which is great. This wonderful cake arrived with candles lit. Uh, and, of course, saw the Maasai around me, and all jumping and clapping, blew the candles out. A wonderful experience. And, uh, you know, to have that kind of treatment was, was, was very special, really. And I uh, loved every, every second of it. It was, it was a wonderful moment, absolutely perfect moment. And uh, one to be remembered forever, really. It's one of those wonderful um, memories you'll never forget. Perfect birthday. That's great. And also you were invited to their village. So they yes. invited you, they wanted to invite you. You were the special guest of honour. Yes. That must have been a wonderful well, experience. Well, it was a totally fantastic experience. And it all happened after, um, after we went on a safari. So we went out uh, in this, this open Jeep, myself, uh, two Maasai warriors, went out into the Maasai. And of course, they're experts out there. They know the terrain very well. Um, and uh, they said to me, see those dots on that mountain over there or hill, Russell? I said, well, well Lord Russell, I said, yes, I can. And it was just facing off to Tanzania. And um, they said, that's, that's it, they're elephants. Really? Mm -hmm. Look like dots, yeah. <laughs> like trees or bushes. Yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> well, these guys. And they were... recognized that straight away. What, what oh, absolutely. Was. Yeah. So the foot went down and off we tore over to this part of uh, the Maasai. And, uh, you know, you're going past giraffe, you're going by past zebra, fantastic. More baboons, wonderful. Uh, and you get there, and there's this, this huge um, family of elephants. Um, with the bulls, of course, watching over eagerly. A, a, yep. a tiny bull that got very interested and started to creep up onto the open, open safari truck, which was mm -hmm. nice. Of course, lots of babies around, the water holes, watching these elephants in their own element was absolutely incredible. So many, many photographs close up, you know, huge experience. 
And after that, they took me off to find lions and leopards, which we duly wow. found. Wow. Uh, got to this lion, pride of lions, and they obviously weren't interested. They obviously had their fill for the, for the morning because this was quite early in the morning we went. They'd had their breakfast. And I was leaning out in this truck with my mobile camera, right. <laughs> taking pictures of these wonderful um, pride of lions. And it, it was lots of females, obviously lionesses, and obviously males there as well. But the male did lift his head and looked at me and uh, thought, oh, not those guys again. I went back to sleep again, you know. But I got a great picture of that particular lion himself. He was beautiful. Wow. And what I did like as well when we found these leopards is the way they sit. You know, I never knew right. this, um, but they, they sit in a circle. So there's probably about okay. eight of them, and they're yeah. all facing in different directions. So they're actually sitting in a circle, covering three hundred. Watch everywhere. Feet. Watch everywhere, and uh, to protect themselves. And obviously, you know, they, and also if they find anything for lunch, they'll go off mm -hmm. and find the lunch. But yeah, exactly. To see nature in its own element is is just something really very special. And of course, we came back after seeing all these wonderful things, and they said, "Well, Russell, uh, Lord Russell, um, we'd like to invite you into our into our village." So, oh, that'd be very nice, a very honourable thing to expect because they don't do that very often. And yeah, I got exactly. to uh, this wonderful village and all the wives come out, all the children. And I, I felt like royalty, like a celebrity, because they're all yes, around. Yes, I, I would think so, yeah. And the children are coming up to me, are bowing their heads, and I was told when they do that, you just touch their head and they wait, look at you, smile and run away. And this is what they were doing. It wow. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> So they put me on a robe and we did the jumping, which I hastened to had I can't do, you know. It's, wow. It's wonderful. Yeah. And uh, did all this great stuff. And then one of the, the warriors said, look, I'd like to invite you into my home. And they literally are, there's no disrespect. They are literally mud huts, seriously. Yeah. And uh, got invited in. His wife was in there. Uh, a few chickens running around as well. And okay. we sat down and had some photographs, had a bit of a chat. He could speak English. She couldn't. But nonetheless, you know, she was happy yeah. to have me in her, happy, happy to have me in her her home and yep. so that was a great experience to be inside a Maasai warrior's um, home invited was just something very very pleasant so never forget that experience wonderful and you had dinner there as well I always had some food as well which is great you know traditional kind of uh, Maasai food which is lovely um, and uh, so a lot of that was going on you know very meat and vegetable focused and okay they grow their own, they grow their own vegetables and and whatever obviously catch their own their own meat product yeah yeah and they had chickens running around so a lot of chicken to eat which was fantastic and that's brilliant you know venetia it, it, it was one of those experiences you could never organize you can you couldn't walk into a travel agency and say this is what i want to do because guess what it's not going to happen um and uh, you have to you have to explore and find these and make these experiences yourself when you do these things it really is quite an exceptional thing to do and yes. so that was written down in history for me and a, a great experience. And um, but that's not where it ended because <laughs> so I right. never saw I never saw a kill when I was out on the safari. I thought, well, when you go on safaris, you've got to see a kill. It's one of those yes, things. Exactly. I know it sounds yeah. morbid uh, and uh, bad in some ways, but it's nature being what nature does. It, it, mm -hmm. it, you know, and that's all there is to it. So the following morning after the safari, I got up early and I was scheduled to go on a, a balloon safari across the, the Maasai. Okay. Um, these two Maasai warriors in the same jeep, off we went. I'm in the back, they're in the front. Travelling through the Maasai at night, this is about 3, 4 in the morning, so it's dark, it's quite cold. Mm -hmm. So I say it's okay. 3,500 feet above sea level, so it was chilly. Yeah. And all around you, you can see and feel the noises, you can see the giraffe, you can see the zebra. Yeah. I'm sure there were some naughty baboons out there somewhere as well, showing <laughs> their, their red bums, but I couldn't see. Uh, and eventually it lights up. We go across a few rivers. Um, I'm not sure there's crocodiles in them or not, but anyway, oh uh, we went across these rivers through the other side and eventually got onto what I could see as a normal road. In front of me on the left-hand side, there was all these about four or five balloons being pumped up. And one of them obviously was one I was going in. Yeah. I thought, great, we're here. And then all of a sudden, from the right-hand side, I saw this um, baboon lurching on the edge, a huge baboon. I thought, oh, here they are. They're going to show me his bum in a moment, another red bum experience. <laughs> and then immediately, this hyena, huge hyena, jumped out from this bush, grabbed it in its strong wow. jaws uh, around the neck and just pulled it limply into the bush for breakfast. And I thought, my God. My God, that must have been frightening. <laughs> This is really happening. It's happened just there. And actually just over there to my left, 
there's these balloons being pumped up, which I'm going to get out of this car and get into. Just right behind me, there was this kill. Yeah. And I think it, you really are in the nature here. You really are in yeah. the SI. You really right are. in the middle of it, yeah. Experience these wonderful things. And it was horrible to see, really. But, but you know, that's nature. It happens. And, of course, you get into the balloon and up you go. I had a great pilot. He was a fantastic guy, the balloon pilot. Brilliant guy. I got to know him quite well. Um, I, think he's, I think a picture of myself and he is, is actually in my book as well, actually. Um, great guy. And to learn how and to see how balloons go into flight, lots of ups and downs to get the height and the way they control them is quite incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when you're up, you're looking out over the basket, and you can see this wonderful um, Maasai Mara beneath you. And it's flat. It's, you know, very, very um, uh, yellow, of course, and dotted trees all over the place. You can see the vastness of this, this, this territory. And all of a sudden, you know, you look down, you see giraffes majestically making their way across the plains. And you look at them and think, whoa, this is really, really good stuff, good nature. Yes. And, of course, you look down a few tracks, you see a hyena or two tracking some prey. They're stalking yeah. their next lunchtime or dinner time delight. And you see all this thing going on. And, of course, then you land. You land by a tree. Okay. You're in Masai Mara. You're yeah. by a tree. There's breakfast being put together by a load of trucks that turned up um, to do these, not just my was balloon, it but others. champagne breakfast for you? It was, yeah. Got out, got out this uh, basket, looked around, thought, I don't know, there's animals out there with sharp teeth. Am I, am I doing the right thing? But, of course, <laughs> it, was, it was brilliant. Under this tree, long table. I sat down at the, the, the top of the table and was drinking champagne. Breakfast was served. What a great start to the day. Wow, yeah. Yep. Absolutely incredible. It would have been about half eight, nine o'clock. Bear in mind, I did leave Cotters at three, so you can see the journey across. It was literally mm-hmm. breakfast. Champagne for breakfast. Felt like Christmas Day. It was amazing. And um, so a great experience as well. And, of course, you get to know a few people and, and a few stories go around, get to know some of the staff that are doing the cooking and the serving. And then my two Maasai warriors turn up in an open jeep. It's time for Russell to, to return to Cotters. Oh and, right! Uh, you must have thought, little... well, is this over? You know, you must have felt a bit sad. Well, it wasn't over, was it? Because it was another three hours journey back, and effectively yeah. another little safari, yeah. seeing a few more animals and a few other little adventures, which is great, you know. So um, overall, it's a tick in the box. I would recommend the Maasai Mara to anybody, and Cotters, uh, the open safari park, was just majestic, brilliant, outstanding place to visit. And uh, that was it. Back to Cotters. I was there again. And the adventure in Africa will then continue because there's more things planned, more things to do um, off out to the Indian Ocean and so on, which I think actually is probably the cue for another another podcast because there were some fantastic yes. things going on there as well. Yes, exactly. Where you went to Malindi. Malindi. The African continent itself is so fantastic. Oh, you know? Incredible on the Indian Ocean and the it's sand islands. And beautiful. All those wonderful things. And, of course, uh, the journey down to uh, Malindi again via Bangladeshi Airways had another story to it uh, because I had to go from the Maasai back to Nairobi. Um, And uh, that particular journey was quite interesting because we had to drop up five minutes down to the next uh, airport in uh, in Maasai, up five minutes down to the next runway in in the Maasai Mara. Got to the third one, and this guy got out of the uh, pilot's area. And it's just a pilot left. So I leant across and said, where's your co-pilot gone? Oh, he's getting off here. And I said, well, do you mind if I co-pilot you? He said, have you flown before? I said, yes. So, no, that's, that's... but not a commercial flight. This is a commercial yeah. flight, for heaven's sake. Yeah. So he said, get in. So I got out the passenger door, walked around to the front, got up the steps into the into the driver's co- into the uh, pilot's cockpit. Okay. And sat there and we went through all the instruments together and did lots of stuff and really... That was, you know, I think we should leave that for another another podcast, really. Yes. Because that was an experience and a half. That really was. Yes, um, we're going to talk about that next time. So right back that, to Nairobi. Back to Nairobi, yeah. Yeah. So what a wonderful experience. And uh, there's more in the book. So that's the type of episode which we talk about, which uh, are just littering the book. And uh, fantastic story, that my way. Which you should get, we should get hold of a book anyway. It's on Amazon as paperback, as a Kindle version. And also, if you want to get the 
hardback version, please contact Lord Russell. If you would like to give your email address, please, Lord Russell. Absolutely. And I have to say, I've said it before, these hardback books are absolutely amazing, beautifully designed. They're absolutely stunning. Um, so a signed copy. Uh, if you drop me an email at Russell, that's R-U-S-S-E-L-L -S -L, at NorfolkLord.co.uk. Uh, we can then communicate, uh, make payment. I can then sign a copy, put whatever words you want me to put into the book and post it out to you. So a nice hardback copy. They're beautiful books. They really are quite stunning. So, yeah, hardbacks available from me personally and on Amazon, as Venetia just said, you've got the Kindle versions as well as the, soft, the softback versions as well. They're available now. And uh, regarding the podcast itself, it's on fortnightly. So the next one will be due. Actually, this is a bit special this time. So it will be due the next one next week. So instead of fortnightly oh, wow. this time, it will be due next week. And uh, we are all available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music on the different platforms. So we would urge you, listeners, to actually subscribe so that you would have all the episodes handy and listen to us, follow us, comment if you want, interact. There's more to come, much more to come. But as I said again, the best thing to do is really to grab hold of a book, which is available on Amazon right now. Absolutely. Anything else you wanted to add, Lord Russell? No, just get the book. It's a beautiful story. Uh, what you're hearing on these podcasts are just little snippets, really. What's, what else is in the book? It's just a, a page turner, an end-to-end -end page turner. You would never better put it down because every page has a story um, about something sad, dangerous, adventurous, happy. You know, it's got everything in there that every book needs. Perfect. Get a copy today. Get a copy today. So thank you very much, Lord Russell, for your time. Thank you very much, Venetia. As always, lovely speaking to you, lovely doing the podcast. I look forward to the next one. As you said, next week. <laughs> next week. It will be next week. So this is a special podcast. So thank you very much to all our listeners as well. And we hope that you will listen again next time. But for this time, please interact. Please subscribe. We are here every fortnight. Thank you very much. Thank you much. very much. Goodbye, everybody. Speak soon. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.